So I was sitting there trying to figure out what to cover next, and a comment pops up on my Blind Ones video saying, so are you actually going to cover the Blind Ones versus the Berserker? The amount of shade in this comment actually kind of reminded me that yeah, I guess I do have a propensity to say I'll cover something and then get totally sidetracked, but since the Blind One episode is fresh in everyone's mind, let's cover a who would win, shall we? And with that flawless intro concluded, I present to you who would win, a Blind One from Metro Exodus or a Berserker from Gears of War. Much like humanity on Sarah, humanity on Earth had it good for a very long time. As our species advanced, we began to test the limits of our bodies as well as other creatures in an effort to form more powerful humans who could survive the coming wars with ourselves. However, in these two universes, humanity split from one another on paths that they would take. The Sarans chose not to nuke themselves into oblivion, but instead created their own monsters that would bring their species to its knees. These monsters would come up during a time after humanity was already weakened by war with itself. The Locust leaders were cold and calculating, systematically genociding any bipedal ape they came across. In an effort to stop this from happening, the Hammer of Dawns were used, glassing large areas of the planet, essentially denying the Locust territory, but at the cost of many human lives and their own society. In Artyom's world, a similar but different path was essentially chosen. Instead, choosing to infight, humanity would push itself to the brink by unleashing nuclear fire and annihilating itself. The United States and Russia traded missiles with one another, decimating large populations and in the process creating their own monsters. This world burned quite similarly to Sarah. That being said, it's quite apparent however that genetic modification was taking place quite regularly as seen with the Dark Ones creation and also the Blind Ones. These creatures were altered forms of Homo sapiens and gorillas. So it is possible that during the time of human gene altering some forms of creatures could have been deemed non-viable subjects and who knows maybe they could be sent away. For the sake of this thought experiment that's going to be a huge 10-4 there, good buddy. Let's imagine for a moment that the Russian scientists inadvertently created a form of locust, much like how the Saren scientists did. Instead of terminating all subjects, however, the Russian scientists saw that these creatures were potentially a new form of humanity that was stronger and more resilient than your average human. Taking them away up the Volga River, they hid the specimen for quite some time and continued their project in secrecy. But once the war began, all scientists either died from exposure, starvation, or dehydration. This left only the more resilient creatures who continued up the technological ladder in much the same way the Locust did on Sarah underground. The time before the war, coupled with the 20 plus years after the war had passed, has yielded Locusts as capable as the ones on Sarah, except on Earth. These boogeymen know of the remaining humans on Earth and eventually make their emergence. Instead of breaking out onto the surface, however, they easily come up into the tunnels of the metro, annihilating humans left, right, and center. Their bodies would still be somewhat affected by the radiation in this thought experiment, and given as not as much time has passed, their numbers would not be as great. Still though, a lot of variants of Locust would exist. One in particular, the Berserker, is sent with a group of Locust soldiers to Nova Sibirsk. The few remaining humans there are in the midst of a full-scale war underground. When the Locusts emerge in the tunnels, it's an absolute bloodbath. Seemingly nobody survives, but the Locusts fall in great numbers as well, considering the humans there were already entrenched in battle with one another, so what's one more target? After the battle, however, the locusts stay in these tunnels and secure the area. As they move outwards, they continue to find more and more man-made tunnels in the area. Some lead under into other buildings. A detachment of locusts is sent out to secure a building where presumably medicine for humans is being made, or at least was made. On a seek and destroy measure to deny any remaining humans in the area this radiation medicine, they continue into the institute. That's when this small group is met with a towering monster. The blind ones can smell the locusts as it's well known, apparently they smell terrible. The Blind One has very little issue tearing apart these locusts. They appear to be more put together than that of humans, which the creature would be familiar with pulling apart previously, but still it has no issue. After not returning, it is assumed that the detachment has not survived, so the remaining locusts bring in the heavies to deal with whatever caused the group to not return. Leading the berserker through the tunnels, they release it into the building as it catches a whiff of something that smells almost human. It runs out to take out whatever it smells. Running up the stairs, the berserker sees a lumbering black lob in its vision. This thing is clearly alive and moving. It rushes it and hits it full force. This however does not do much and instead it hits back with a force that sends the berserker falling backwards. So what happens now? To understand who would win this fight we must first examine their strengths and weaknesses. Starting with the berserker, I covered this creature a while back but let's just say that was early Roanoke so it wasn't really as detailed as it could have been and it was a total cringe factory of an episode. I'm sure I won't be sitting here a year from now talking smack about 
about my current self. Anyways, the Berserker is an absolute powerhouse of armor, anger, and offensive capabilities. Let's talk armor first. The Berserker is essentially a bulletproof sponge, I guess you could say, at least to most handheld weapons, and in this case, it may as well be just a flea biting her. She can run through entire battalions of soldiers as they open fire and still no problem. This armor affords her to be hit quite hard before she is finally injured. And also, this armor is really only countered by extreme heat. Able to survive a direct shot from a hammer of dawn for a time, it is presumed that there must be no nerves in this armor plating, and it is extremely difficult to pierce. The anger is another thing entirely. The creature is already already massively aggressive, but when angered, she gets faster and more determined. Tracking down humans with extreme prejudice, she uses her senses to sniff out any in the surrounding area. Should she catch any human, she will tear them limb from limb quite easily while she screams the whole time. This anger fuels the creature, and presumably much like the Hulk, the angrier she gets, the more lethal she gets. Just like my ex-girlfriend, you knew I couldn't make an episode about the Berserker without throwing her in there. Her offensive measures are well known. When a locust soldiers just aren't able to break through due to heavy armor in the area or lots of soldiers and fortifications, berserkers are sent in to clear everything out. Just by blindly walking around, they destroy everything. This will soften up the enemy for regular soldiers to move in and take out any remaining stragglers. They have the capability to completely destroy mechanized equipment as well due to their strength and aggressiveness. Essentially, this creature is borderline unstoppable. All that being said, the berserker does have one main weakness, however. She cannot see. Well, she can, but it's very poor vision acuity. Due to this, her other senses such as smell and hearing have compensated, allowing her to find enemies. This poor eyesight is thought to be due to the armoring affecting her corneas as it does with the rest of her skin. The Berserkers will stand roughly 10 feet tall, or about 3 meters. She will weigh somewhere in a range of 900 to 1100 pounds, or 408 to 498 kilograms. Her weight is given to her by her armor and muscle, and she appears to have very little body fat, if any, meaning that she is really just solid, usable mass. So even though the last episode was over the blind one, many didn't see it, so let's do a quick rundown. The blind one is an absolute unit in its own right. This creature possesses the ability to use telepathy, or a primitive form at least. It moves around blindly in an area, smelling and sensing any creatures. When it does move around, it will feel out using its extremely long arms. And should it locate anyone or anything, it almost seems to have an innate knowledge they actually are. They are covered with quite a bit of muscle and fur. This fur and muscle would presumably protect the internal organs from battering and and damage, as well as the elements. Also, in turn, this muscle provides massively powerful hits and strength unrivaled by anything in the world, barring the mutated bear's swiping power. The blind one is also fairly intelligent. It is probably that during the course of its experimentation, the blind ones have had their mind altered to some degree. So while more than likely not as intelligent as humans or blind ones, their minds would quite easily rival that of the berserker at minimum. They can think, track, and speak in their own heads telepathically to creatures in the area. They also possess absolutely brutal teeth and an immensely strong jaw capable of ripping apart smaller creatures fairly easily. This coupled with the strength of their arms would mean that they could hold down creatures much larger than them and tear into them. The arms also give the blind ones the capability to provide bone snapping attacks, absolutely pulverizing these bones of other animals, and this also tenderizes them before they're torn apart. Another thing to consider on the blind one is while it does not have armor plating, it does appear to possess fat over its internal organs. This could, in theory, absorb more impact from a hit concerning the Berserker. The blind one also possesses the same weakness as the Berserker. This is going to be shocking to everyone here, but the blind one is blind. A fold of skin was more than likely surgically added over the eyes, completely removing sight from its arsenal. However, even with this being the case, its sense of hearing and smelling have compensated, and this form of telepathy also seems to help them, which could actually be something it has over the Berserker. The blind one is thought to stand roughly about 10 feet tall as well, which is about 3 meters again, and weigh over a thousand pounds, so it's more than likely above 498 kilograms. So, with these two 10 foot tall titans meeting, how might this go down? Well, first, the Berserker would use its standard attack after hearing the Blind One rush in. Expecting to blow apart anything it hits, it would slam into the Blind One with full force. However, unlike the smaller things it does usually hit, the Blind One would be a much heavier and stout target. It would be able to absorb the impacts. However, it would be incredibly bruised with some skin injuries forming. Depending on how it was hit, this also could result in some worse injuries like rib fractures or even broken bones in the arms and shoulders. 
shoulders. This in turn would make the blind one furious. Hearing the stomping of a berserker, it reels backwards from the impact due to Newton's laws of physics, which we know is for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. The blind one would then run towards the berserker. Here it would lay an absolute smackdown on the berserker, the likes of which she has never encountered before. The powerful arms of the blind one would impart so much force into the berserker that despite the armor protecting her body, it would not matter. The damage done to the berserker would be great, even possibly softening up the armor on the body. This in turn would anger the berserker, seeing as she is now experiencing something she hasn't before. Pain. The berserker does have another form of offense besides running and hitting. She also appears to have some form of claws. This coupled with the strength of her hits would slice fairly deep into the blind one as it does not actually have the armor plating that the berserker has. But this armor plating isn't all good. The fact of the matter is, is that it is jagged and that means it can be grabbed onto. These jagged pieces would more than likely become ripped off by the blind one in the process of this fight, which would definitely lead to some pretty terrible pain. The fight would be an absolutely bloody one. The berserker claws would be slicing up the blind one, while the blind one would be literally ripping off pieces of armor plates on the berserker. One of them though would end up falling to the other, and this would almost be based on luck. Who smelled who first? Who heard who first? Who got in the first hit? Where was the hit? But let me sum it up this way. Should the berserker get the first hit in and hit somewhere kind of vital like the humerus bone or snap a rib, the berserker would win as the blind one's main offensive capability has been halved by the damage to the arm, and if the rib is snapped, it could potentially pierce the lung, leading to internal bleeding and suffocation of this creature by its lungs filling with blood. The berserker would have the power to do this, seeing as it can crash through stone walls fairly easily. However, as mentioned previously, it should be noted that blind ones do possess body fat. This fat could be a great shock absorber and would negate the impact of the berserker. The reverse of this is that should the blind one knock down the berserker and get the drop on it, it could pummel this creature. Its armor would mildly help, perhaps helping it to survive the barrage, but should it not be able to get back up, the blind one could use its fists to smash the skull and even return the broken rib favor to the berserker. However, physically, these are two creatures fairly similar in strength, size, and defensive measures, but the berserker does have one crucial advantage. It's not totally blind. If you get close enough, a berserker can actually make out your shape. This would help the creature understand where the head and shoulders are on a blind one. Damaging these points would ultimately render the creature defenseless and even just straight up unconscious. But we are here to ask ourselves, who would ultimately win this knockdown drag out fight? I would have to give it to the Berserker. Due to her rage, ability to at least somewhat see, and armor plating, the fact is she's actually tougher than a blind one. A blind one has skin and fat which would split and be very limited in its ability to absorb damage, whereas a Berserker has armor plating allow her to be hit multiple times. Not to mention when a blind one is right up on a Berserker, she would be able to see him and could figure out where to hit, which would more than likely be the face and head region. A blind one would not know where to hit a Berserker and instead would just wildly swing at it. it basically comes out to the blind one not being able to impart as much damage into the berserker due to its lack of sight and inability to bypass the armor plating. And the berserker is able to focus its hits on the blind one and survive hits that would outright kill most other creatures. Even with the blind one's telepathic abilities as well, it appears that the berserker's senses are honed into the point that while it may not be telepathic, it would be able to find and locate a blind one in the area, much like how a blind one would find the berserker. So there you have it. I covered what I said I would, so there's absolutely zero chance of catching any shade. Thank you guys for watching. Now let me ask, who do you think would win in this fight and why? I like covering these because every time someone actually has some aspect that I hadn't considered in the fight and it makes for a pretty cool conversation. But anyhow, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, then hit that like button, my guy. And if you are new, subbing is a great way to keep up with the channel. I will drop my... Twitter, Discord, and Patreon links in the description if anyone's interested in that. And of course, I would like to thank my patrons. We've got three astronauts now. What up though? You guys are crazy. First up, it's Joseph Givens. Thank you for your patronage, bro. And then we got an old favorite, Laffy No Skill. I appreciate the donations as well, man. And then we got It's Not a Spoon. Thank you, Rochacho, for being a scientist and now you're an astronaut. Moving up in the world, man. I appreciate it. Next up, our astrophysicist, and I'm sticking with the name Absolute Unit. It's Mom Spaghetti. Thank you for your donations as well 
well, my dude. Then we come to our scientists. We've got Arlam Lupe, and then next up, it's your boy, Artem Shornage. And what up? It's Zach Krieger. Thank you, guys. I also appreciate your donations. Our residents are A. Laurentis and Punished Meat. It's kind of funny name. Our geneticists are Allison Casparo, Andrew Lawson, and Divine Whisper. Holding down their Masters of Biology, we have Adam Hartswick, Cameron Smith, Hoff Syrup, Edgy McGee, Mr. Poyfish, Pendleton 115, Stutz, The Run of Lies, and The Otter Man. And last but not least, with their Bachelors in Morphological Sciences, we have Add to the List, Ahigao Comics, Alex the Gun Guy, Anthony Wolf, Captain Gas Mask, Dustin Ellis, Eric Scott Gillies, Fruit Eater, Icarus, Kyle McHenry, Marcus Haval, Molten Tarts, Professor Bennett's, Riot, Russell McBride, The Original Fat, Trixie Lula Moon, and Ulf Hetnar 845719. Thank you guys for your continued support. Actually, I just want to tell y'all, it is super dope because I am starting firefighting and EMT school soon, uh, so I will be taking a hiatus away from my scientist job to do this school. Kind of wanted to do something a little more hands-on to help people, so this is helping tremendously. I really do appreciate it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one.